All right, welcome back to SoFlow TV again, everybody. It is your host with the most. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, please, and let's get right into the story. So, last month, the same religious group in Jamaica was raided, and a bunch of children were taken into state custody. We didn't get a chance to talk about state custody versus living in this compound, but we did speak about people having the right and the freedom to live how they choose as long as they are not violating children and as long as they are living, you know, clean, upright, so to speak. Doesn't necessarily mean that they have to live according to how we say they should live because every man has a right to live his or her life, right? Okay, now, breaking news, June 30th, 2023 today is july 1st morning off that i'm doing this voiceover and the headline coming from the jamaica star says 20 persons have been arrested during a raid on the religious compound which means they raided the compound again or is this just another old flingback no it's not it was published june 30th of 2023 so the same compound has been raided one month later again. I think they have something. They must have something. And here is why I believe. First of all, let's get into the story. So, following this morning's multi-agency raid on the Kahal Yahweh religious compound in Montego Bay, St. James, the police have confirmed that 20 persons have been arrested. Hmm. Why would they go there remove a bunch of people, raid the compound, and then a month later, raid that compound again. Not only that, look at who is in custody now. So the star understands that the group's leader is now among those that were arrested in this new raid. They are being detained at the Montego Bay Freeport Police Station. Our news team has been reliably informed that several exhibits, photographs, and other material of evidential value were removed from the compound by investigators. This morning's operation was incident-free and involved over 50 members of the security forces and other agencies, including the Ministry of Health, this morning's raid follows the removal of 23 children from the facility last month. The children are still currently in state custody. Okay. So last month when this happened and the 23 children were removed from the compound, there was a big uproar by people in the community who basically were just saying their suspicions to the media. You understand? There was no founded anything wrong inside of the compound that was published to the public. For instance, the Star, Gleaner, Loop, none of the major news entities out of Jamaica did not come to us, the public, and said, we have solid proof that these children are a part of a sex ring, or we found material, be it photograph, written material, or pictures from a computer, or anything that would entail to us that these children are being abused, or these children are being used in ways that, you know, a child should never be involved in. None of that happened, but the children the 23 children who were taken away from the compound were placed in state custody. Now, I asked my audience the last video I did, I compared this group to the Kevin Smith group. And I said, the reason why the Kevin Smith group was able to go on so long was because the Kevin Smith group was linked to people of power. I mean, you can go do your research and see for yourself, understand? Remember on his way to the final ceremony where uh, people were starting to kill each other at his command and the police on JDF 
raided the place and it was a shootout and all this stuff happened. Remember that. Remember who spent the weekend with him. Remember the police official who actually escorted him to the compound. Remember the female police official who actually escorted him in to the ceremony. Okay, this group that is called the Kahal Yahweh religious group, my theory is that, or my opinion and theory is that they didn't they don't have anybody who is in a position of power in government or law enforcement so there is no nothing there to cushion the blow for them nobody to speak on the inside for them but kevin smith organization had people on the inside to speak on his behalf and cushion the blow you understand what i'm saying so i asked my audience i said would it be okay if law enforcement personnel ran up in your house, took all your children, placed them in state care, and you said to them, okay, what's the purpose of you taking my kids from my home? These are my children. This is my house. My house is clean. They can live in here. It might not be arranged like your house, but there's nothing funny and fishy going on in here. So why are you taking my children? And they tell you that they're taking your children under suspicion. Suspicion, you know. Suspicion is something that has to be proven. Now, these children were taken from the home and they were placed in state care. And they've been in state care for over a month now. And then suspicion has kept them there. And we have not heard anything from the media from law enforcement that would be released to the media sent to us if any of that suspicion was founded to be true instead what we're hearing is another raid was conducted and i'm starting to believe that maybe they found something because check it they took the kids out first right they hold them in state custody state care for a month within that month these children, if they were being brainwashed, if they were being um, indoctrinated, if they were feeling like they were in fear, then they probably would not talk to law enforcement the first day or two or even week or two in their custody. But as time goes by and these children see that law enforcement is more powerful than the people that they are with, then they might start to open up so law enforcement is asking them questions are you being abused there what type of activities um, are you involved in on a daily basis if these children start to talk and these still children start to describe horrendous activities illegal activities then law enforcement would start to plan to do another raid if they question these children over a period of a month and these children gave them nothing other than i want to go home i don't like it here where you have us this is not how we're supposed to be living we wake up in the morning at home we eat breakfast we pray then we go off to homeschooling and then we play outside and then we go back inside this is not it for us and they kept to that story and they could get nothing else out of them they would have returned those children to the compound to the adults that they belong to now there's something worrying about the way how this is portrayed as well which i spoke about you remove 23 children from a compound you through the media tells the com the country that 23 children were removed from the compound here's the first question that any adult's going to ask or any responsible concerned adult where are the parents for these children because if i should read this article it makes it seems like these children have no parents it makes it seems like these children are from everywhere and anywhere right it leans towards trafficking human trafficking you understand because nothing is saying in these articles the parents of the children are present at the compound and the parents of the children have permission or the parents of the children live at the compound with the children if that's the case then 
parents and children living where they live, that's their business. For instance, I found last month when they removed the children from that compound, some of the reasons were frivolous. Some of the reasons that were given for people in the community who were concerned that bad things were happening at this compound. One lady said they saw the children carrying water from a standpipe nearby. Now, being a person that was raised in Clarendon, Jamaica, we had a tank on the side of the house. And some years when drought came and the tank dried up because we didn't have much tank, this is before we got multiple tanks around the property and before we got an overhead tank for the house, right? We used to have to go down the road and go to a standpipe and carry water. And then we had to go down in the gully and go to a spring and carry water and full drums. So to hear a Jamaican say that, I don't think things are happening right at that house, you know, because I see the children carrying water, which leads me to believe they don't have running water. There are many schools in Jamaica today that still have pit toilets, not bathrooms with flushable toilets and running water, pit toilets. And there are many homes in Jamaica where children are being raised that still don't have running water. Matter of fact, there are many communities in Jamaica today that still don't have running water. So to use this as an excuse to say bad things are happening at the compound made no sense to me, right? And that's what I spoke about. A lot of people came on the video in the comment section and said, so Flo, you seem like you're defending these people and their cult lifestyle. No, I'm asking people to think logically. All I ever ask for is proof. If you can show me the proof that something is going on there that should not be going on involving these children, then by all means, remove those children and bring them to safety. But if you cannot prove that anything is going on, even after you have removed those children, then leave those people alone because this is not the first time they have been raided. What happened after the first raid? They raided that compound before. They removed children and adults from that compound before. Why were the children returned? Nothing was found, right? Okay. So this time around, they held the children. It says last, late last month, which means it's been a month. So they held the children and now the children are still in state custody and now they're conducting another raid. So in this other raid, now the leader of the group has been detained among others. Okay. And now they're saying that they have several exhibits, photographs, and other material of evidential value were removed from the compound by investigators, evidential value, meaning these materials will serve as evidence. Evidence to what? Evidence to whatever the charges will be. Evidence to whatever the accusations are from law enforcement about what is going on at the compound. Now, let's close the video and talk about this part. In closing, we'll talk about state care. Recently, a young lady came out and she gave her account of what life is like in state care in Jamaica. So, the first question that comes to mind when people hear that 23 children were placed in state care, we ask, is it better for them to be in state care than it is for them to be at that compound? Hmm. You decide. Because I've heard the horror stories of state care. Remember the young lady, I believe she spoke to Andre Stevens first, and then her video went viral, and she called a whole bunch of names of people in positions of power who would line up to use the children that are in state care, particularly the girls, and she described how she was RAPED multiple times by certain people, and when she ran to another person thinking she was going to get help, the same thing happened to her again and again and again, right? And not only did it happen to her, it happened to those who were with her as well. So she was given an account and calling names. And I said she needed to be protected because the names that she's calling, she might just lose her life because that's how Jamaica is.
you know, you're erased easily and the story ends and nobody asks any questions. So my concern is for these 23 children that are in state care. Are they being treated good? Is anybody taking advantage of them? Is state care safer for them than what is going on in the house? Are they going to be transparent? They meaning law enforcement officials, those who are running into this compound, raiding the compound, taking all this stuff that they call evidential material, so on, so or, or material of evidential value, so on, so forth. Are they going to be transparent with the public so the public knows what's going on? We'll see. Keep your eyes peeled. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about this one. And I'll catch you on the next video. It's SoFlo TV. I'm out. Peace. All right, my SoFlo TV audience. This I've been wondering for the longest. Why has Jamaica not gone totally solar yet? After all, Jamaica has powerful sunshine all year round. And people are in darkness in certain areas especially in rural areas and they've been that way for decades waiting on government to install street lights well saninka solar lights these are commercial grade lights perfect for rural areas perfect for dark corners and lanes perfect for the backyard the front yard down the road driveway lighting stores Perfect for the farm, waterproof and remote control. Make your surroundings safer. Jamaica has sun all year round and you will have no problem keeping these lights charged. Did I mention that they are commercial grade and they are remote controlled? You don't have to wait on government to install lights. Some people in some areas have been waiting for decades, literally decades, and they are still in the darkness. These are easy to install. Get in touch with Seninka and they will do the rest for you. And the best part is this. You don't have to pay a monthly light bill. No, this is not about you like a JPS bill because it's charged by the sun. So take yourself out of the darkness now. Increase your safety now. Get in touch with Saninka Solar and thank me later. Come on, man. Watch there. All the contact information is right there for you. IG, email, phone number, which you can call by WhatsApp, which is free globally. Go on. Get yourself out of the darkness and into the light. Bye.